Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create and I'm back and we're going to start decorating page four. Okay, so this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack and um, I've trimmed this down to fit, I'm going to pull in page five as well. Over here on the side that doesn't have any uh, moving flaps, it does, but it's, it's it'll, <clears throat> on the right hand side, um, it'll go to the right on the left hand page, it'll go to the left. And we're going to center this piece and then we're going to put some uh, trim pieces there. So I cut it to, to the width. So this is four inches, so it's three and seven eighths. I'm going to center it top to bottom and then I'm going to put some uh, color blocking on the top and bottom. So we want to find our midpoint. And do the same thing on both sides. <clears throat> and then I'm going to mark this. Find the midpoint. This is six inches, so it's three. And three. Be easy enough to lay down. This is again from the 12 by 12 collection pack. <clears throat> There's a helicopter going by. Okay, I'm going to line up my tick marks, left and right. What? That's not right. That's not right. Much better. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we are going to add two quarter inch strips. These are from the 12 by 12 pattern in solid. And we're going to add one to the top and one to the bottom. And you can't really use a solid piece. Um, here because I don't think we have enough. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm doing some color blocking is to stretch my paper. Okay, do the same thing on this side. And again, these are a quarter inch wide. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a green strip. And this is a half inch, and it's really not big enough. So I have two options. I can lay this down and then put like an eighth inch strip of orange, or I can make a, a fatter green. So I'm going to look at one that's a little bit wider and see how that looks. Um, or if it's, you know, what I'm, I'm concerned that it might just be too much green. Well, I think I'm going to go with a little bit wider strip. So that was a quarter inch. And let's see what we're going to need to trim out for the green. It's three quarters of an inch. So. Okay. 
I think it needs to be five. No, that doesn't seem right. I was going to say five eighths, but that's not enough. I'm going to mark it and then measure it. So I want to have a, a little bit of a, a border here and a little bit of a break here. So how much is that? It is five eighths. No, it's not. I was starting at the end of the ruler, not where the actual measurement starts. Well, yes, it is five eighths. Okay, so I'm going to make it how much did we decide that was? Five eighths. Five eighths. Let's see. I think I've got some other green. Nope, that's fine. I can use this one. This is a challenge. Okay. Let's see how I did. That's five eighths. Mm, I think it could be a smidge bigger. Let's see how we did. How does that look? Ooh, see, that's not quite. Oh, so I'm going to have to back off just a little bit. And I'm actually going to use my ruler to trim this down because it's too small to go into the trimmer. So I'm just going to take a sliver off. And that should do it. And then I'll measure it and let you know what, what I wound up with. Darn it, it slipped on me. It's this small, it's hard to hold still. And I have a non slip on the back of the ruler, but <laughs> it's not as non slip as I'd like it to be. I'm just going to put the two ends together and see if they meet, and yes, they do. So I was able to trim that down, and I like it. So the next thing is to get the right length. <clears throat> if you go cut that. <clears throat> Now I'll tell you what I wound up with. So it looks like It's just a hair over five eighths. So that's about as close as I can get it. A hair over five eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay. see how, which side it fits best on. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put it down, then we'll measure the next one.
Okay. I've got some left over. Let's see. go. I like it. Okay, so for the pocket here, I've chosen this, which is also from the Patterns and Solids, which is 12 by 12. And I've got an ink and it's ready to go. Okay, and then for the insert, I'm going to use the teacups, but I'm going to hold off on that for a few minutes because I need to make a couple of other decisions um, about my borders here and um, also about what my background is going to be right here. So I'll be right back, and while I'm away, I'm going to go ahead and do page five up to this point. So I'll be right back. Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne, and we are working on Alice. Alice's tea party and um, I went ahead and laid out uh, parts of page five and we're going to do page four together but I'm going to give you a glimpse of what we're doing so we're going to lay down these two cream pieces and this band and then we're also going to put a header on both of these and we're going to back at least the top part of the pocket so we're going to do that right now and I'll just leave that there kind of for reference so let's open this up and start. We're going to cover these two small pockets. And I think, no, I haven't. I was going to say, I think I got everything, but last night I think I just got everything trimmed and then called it quits. Just a light, just taking out the white core. You can distress in, but I wouldn't recommend using mahogany. It's, it's just really dark. Yesterday I went to lunch and I had this wonderful lunch, but it was on toasted bread. It was so crunchy I tore off the top of my mouth. So I feel like I'm talking funny. Okay. <clears throat> and I also reviewed and uploaded some of my videos last night and I don't know what's going on, but you guys got a whole lot of the top of my head. So I'll try to do better with that today. <clears throat> so that you you can see what's going on and not my hair color <laughs> or lack of hair color. <laughs> it's a beautiful sunny day here in San Diego. We had a fair amount of rain um, over the holidays, but it's been really nice since New Year's. It's, it's real pleasant. There we go. Now I have this small strip that's going to fit right in between. I think I need to trim it just a little bit. And um, I'm going to just ever so slightly push it behind these two panels. But actually, actually I, I had given enough space on my tape purely by accident that I can slide it down when I install it. So I'm going to shorten this just a tiny bit. And it looks like it's inked. So I'll be right back.
And just so you know, this is a half inch strip. So that should work, but you may have to do a little hand trimming to make sure it fits between your pockets. Hey, that looks good. Problem is it doesn't want to slide once I get it in. There we go. Now I'm going to use my spatula, tuck it in a little. There I am doing my head again. I'm trying to make sure that I didn't uh, put it at an angle. It looks pretty good. Okay, so as far as this page goes, we're finished now. I mean, for now, let's go ahead and take, I went ahead and covered these entirely. So I'll tell you what I did. So this is a one inch right here break because I didn't have enough of this paper. So I did a one inch break and that, that was perfect. That helped me stretch out my pattern. This is from the 12 by 12. This is a quarter inch strip. So I did that for both page four and five. This is from the eight by eight collection pack and it's the back of the pocket. Pay attention to the build process because I built this way out of order. Um, the, the first page I built was the one that had the most interactions because I wanted to see how much paper I was going to use before I designed the rest of the pages. So it is definitely built out of order. Okay, this is going to cover this large pocket. This is from the Patterns and Solids, which I forgot to mention on the front. It needs a little ink. Um, oh, I got it. One of the edges was exposed. starting to dry so I'm going to burnish it make sure it goes down okay. since I have my inserts out let's go ahead and lay down this strip now I told you to tack down the center and that was premature so I'm, I only used a dot of glue so I'm just going to lift it we're going to put our designer paper in then we're going to tack it down again too bad there's a little bit of a snag here but it's not too bad the paper won't be going in where that snag is so I'm not really worried about it okay let's get some glue on this lay it down then we're going to tack that pocket half of the pocket closed again Now 
This strip is three quarters of an inch and it should easily cover the back of the pocket. So we're going to do the um, tack point. Sorry, I'm going to get it right side up again so I get, make sure my pattern's going right. Okay, now we're going to um, cut a, a decorative strip for, actually, these are the two that need it. Nope, these two. I was in the right spot. Okay, so we are going to create a decorative trim for both of these. And just as a reminder, these inserts are three and a half by three and three quarters. So this is a one inch um, decorative strip. So I need to take a break and find some florals that I can use for that. And it looks like this is going to work out for me. So I'm going to trim those down and cut my corners. And then when I get back, we'll go ahead and finish the um, inserts here. Okay, I found a couple of uh, bits that we're going to use right here, and then one here. And this is um, all consistent with um, the pieces that I used here and here, same scale, so it's from the 12 by 12. And, yep, there's ink on it. This one, for some reason, it looks a lot bigger, so I'm just going to double check that they're the same height. Mm, this one's crooked. Uh, trying to decide if I want to salvage it or if I want to just trim off another piece. The problem with it being crooked is when I go in to lay down the second half, It'll, it'll need an angle. So I'm just going to trim another piece. So I need another a one inch strip, one inch strip. And this is fun because it actually has a little saying on top. I was able to cut around. So this says drink me and this says this way, that way. Okay. So I'm going to do my corners real quick. The way I like to use um, the corner chopper is I like to put the designer paper and the craft paper together and then cut it at the same time. There is some wiggle room in this corner chopper, so you can wind up going one way or the other, but if you do it this way, at least it's going to line up. Which is, you know, it's a little confusing, but, and I don't know if, the, if all the tools are this way, or if it's just mine. i got to find a different angle to hold it. There we go. But like when I put it in, I can either go left or right. And just that little bit of wiggle room makes it line up, not line up when you go to mat it. Okay. 
can ink it. Okay, I think that's all I have trimmed out for now. I'm kind of trimming and laying down because I don't want to accidentally cut through anything. So that's part of the reason why you're seeing so many breaks, but I really don't want to accidentally cut through anything. So we still have plenty to cover. So I'm going to um, go away and start lining up the papers for the first inside flap, okay? So everything I did for page four, you're gonna go ahead and do for page five. And again, that's a quarter inch strip. This is 12 by 12. The background of the hearts is from the eight by eight, 12 by 12 patterns and solids, 12 by 12 collection. The background here is from the patterns and solids. Okay, so that's where we are right now. When I come back, we are going to finish the first flap, um, the inside of the first flap. So, okay, be back soon. Okay, everyone, I've lined up the papers that are gonna go inside our flap. And I'm gonna pull in page five because I'm gonna show you what I did. So this closes like this. So we're gonna open these two flaps. Remember, they're mirror images. And I put a header on top of each one of the inserts. I've added this the pocket liner. And then I also covered this panel. So that's what we're gonna do together, and I'm still going to cover this. I just don't know with what. I have to wait and see what I have left over. Okay, so let's start with doing our inserts. Then we'll do our pocket liners. I've already trimmed these. These are one inch strips and ink them. They're from the 12 by 12 collection pack. Same scale as the cover page. Sorry about that. Somebody must be at the front door. <clears throat> okay, there's our two inserts. Now let's do our pocket liners. These are from the 12 by 12 collection pack, and they're not inked. So let's do that real quick. That's what I was afraid of, that I didn't get that in straight. I might, I think I'm gonna trim, hand trim a piece to go here so that I don't have such a wide gap. And let's see, and this one's gonna be probably, mm, this one's gonna be okay, I guess. Actually, this one fits better, so let's give that a shot. Why, I don't know. That makes no sense to me since I trimmed them out the same size. Yeah, that's gonna work. How weird is that? I can still see that this is not straight, but it's nowhere near as obvious with the other piece. I 
and that's going to go in beautifully. Okay, let's put our pocket inserts back in. We'll come back and cover more of the, uh, the insert later. And then the last thing is this large piece, which is going to go here. Let's get, make sure everything's right side up. It's going to go right here. And then I'll lay them side by side so you can see four and five together. Okay, that's page four. And here's page five. So again, um, these are the two inside flaps. And of course we still have more to do, but we've got this part done. I'm gonna wait and cover these at the very end when I know what kind of scraps I have left. So the next thing we're gonna focus on is this side. Okay, so we've got a large panel to cover, and then we've also got a flap on each side. So there's a long way to go on this one. I'll be back soon. Okay, everyone, um, I've made some design choices and I went ahead and implemented them in page five so I can share that with you as we build page four together. So, we last left off, we had just finished um, this side. Now we're going to work on the inside. So this is our target, and that's what we're doing over here. And again, it's a um, it's a mirror image. This strip is measured, this is two inches. And this is just shy of two inches, and it just happened to be the scrap I had left over. So I'm going to fill the void with um, another piece this size, and I'm going to cut it to um, to fit, trim it to fit. So let's go ahead and get the orange piece in right now. We're getting close. This, um, oh wow, I didn't realize, look how far off I was here. <laughs> That's way off, I'm going to have to fix that. <laughs> that. That just won't do. Anyway, sorry. Distraction. I'll come back to that later. It's funny because I remember messing around with that a couple of times to try to get it right. It didn't show up until it had something behind it. Okay, come on. I need to clean my tip and I just don't feel like I could take a break right now. I'm trying to get this out by tomorrow, which is January 7th. I'm trying. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but that's my goal. That's my target. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so we've got that in. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this one in. And again, we're doing this mirror image. And then we'll trim to fit this last piece. I mentioned it before, but pay particular attention to the build order. Um, it will make a difference in how you're trimming out your paper and what's left over. And I'm using a, a lot of paper. Um, I'm not going to have much left over. And in fact, I'm starting to worry I'm not going to have enough to finish the project. In which case, uh, I might uh, open another pack of patterns and solids. We'll see. We're not there yet. It's not over yet. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is cut a sliver to fit here. And I thought I had already pulled one of those... I did right here. Let's see if this is it. This happens to be a half inch and it's a little too tight. So I'm gonna to need to take a sliver off. So this is normally too small to go into my trimmer. So I am going to tape it 
temporarily tape it to this paper so that I can manage it in and out of the trimmer. I'm sure most of you have done a similar technique. And this is just temporary removable tape. Okay, I'm going to slide it into my paper trimmer. Let's lay it down a second and see how much do I need to take off. Sorry, I mislaid my pencil. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, shoot. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. Okay, let's see how I did. Actually, I need to cut a little more. I don't want it to get in a hinge. Okay, that looks like it's gonna work. So I started out with a half inch and then I just trimmed it down and until it fit that space. Okay, so it'll be the same as this side. We'll ink it and lay it down. Okay, so now we have um, these two sides matching. So the next thing I'm going to do is what am I doing? So we should have two inserts here. Actually, it's supposed to go like that. So we're back in, in the right order, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, now this opens and we are going to dress these two panels. So this is the flap extension. So we're gonna use this and these. This is from the 12 by 12. This is from the patterns and solids. And so that's gonna go right here on the bottom and the top. So I just want to share with you again, this is the fully closed, just so you're aware of where I'm at. We've dressed this side out, then you flip it over. We just finished this, open this, and this is where we're at right now. Okay, 
add this decorative strip here. Okay, we're going to do the same thing at the top. Better, better. Okay, so that is done. And then also I had forgotten, here's my two inserts, I think. Yes. So I'll go ahead and put those back. I may wind up adjusting this one that the border's not quite right. If I have enough scraps, I will. Okay, so we're still, we're gonna finish this last piece here. So this is from the 12 by 12, and it needs to be trimmed to fit. These two um, are one inches, one inch. So I try to keep, whenever I'm doing a strip, I try to keep it pretty standard. It's a quarter inch, half inch, or an inch. It just makes it easier for me to remember, and it also makes calculating the, the piece, the color blocking easier. Now I really do need to find my pencil. Here it is. Okay, because this is where we start using it when you're color blocking. I'm going to mark both sides just in the event I didn't get these strips in straight. We can correct it visually by just cutting a slight diagonal. That's right. It was at a very slight diagonal, and um, I was able to correct that, uh, visually correct it by cutting it slightly askew in the trimmer. Okay, that's why I mark both sides. It's really only an issue when you're color blocking. Um, if you don't, if one of these pieces doesn't go in perfectly straight, you lose your right angle. And if you're going to have to correct, make a correction. Um, preferably do it on the um, piece that has the most pattern. It's the most forgiving. Okay, I just want to verify I've got everything right side up before I put this very directional piece down. Lovely, lovely. Okay, let's check and see where we're at. Oops, we're going this way. So we finished that. We finished this. We finished this. Now it's time that we finished this. Now it's time to do this right hand side. And we should have a couple of strips. That goes on the inside. I think these are not measured right. I gotta double check. One and a half. That's two inches, and I think this is one and a half. Okay, I think I need to cut 
um, a two inch strip, which I thought I did, but it's one and a half. And so let's set that aside. We're not going to work on this for the sec for, for a moment. We're going to go ahead and open it all the way. So when I do that, here we are. Take this insert out. So again, these are mirrors. So this is going to go here. The center will go here. So the center is going to go like this and like this. And this. And here's where my inch and a half strip comes in here. And then over here, I've got. I need another green strip and oops, this goes like this. I need this paper, which I thought I had already trimmed out. So let me see. What have I done? Is this it? Yeah, it's not trimmed, but that's it. And then the pocket itself has this and did we get it all i'm going to turn it upside down so we can line it all up because it's a mirror right so if you turn it upside down it should all line up so everything has a place okay and as you can see i mean it would be a mirror right okay so let's go ahead and start laying these down this is again one of the reasons why i like to um, lay down pieces sooner rather than later is I don't want to accidentally repurpose them. So I do think I need, no, I don't. Yeah, I do need another strip of this, but it's not for this side. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Let me double check these. And it looks like I'm going to need to trim the green down just a smidge. This looks right. And it has ink. Okay, Let me double check this. It looks like, yeah, I need to trim this out so that I have color blocking effect looks like I'm taking off an eighth of an inch roughly but you need to um, dry fit it to come up with your number I'm going to verify the size of this strip it's one and a half This one is one and a half. The one over here is one and three quarters. And the reason it's a little bit bigger is because I want it to slide inside the pocket. Only one and a half inches is going to be exposed. So you get that balance. Okay, let me trim this out. Our next piece. Oh, I gotta, I gotta turn everything right side up again. Or double check. Yep, 
that's right. Okay. I'm right. I'm right. My desk isn't quite wide enough to have both pieces sitting here side by side. Sorry. Even if I could, you wouldn't be able to see it. The frame's not big enough. 12 by 12 patterns and solids. And then we're going to go ahead and put this, slide this into the pocket since it's sitting here. Here's our last piece of green. Oh my gosh, and it's a little too, I should have checked it. I should have put this one here and that one there. Gosh darn it. It's a little too narrow. I'm gonna hold off on tacking this down because there is a chance that I'm gonna use more paper. And if I open up a patterns and another patterns and solids, I'm going to trim out a piece that fits better. This one was wider, and now I know why. I laid it out earlier and I somehow missed that. Okay. So I had enough paper, I made a mistake on. You guys shouldn't make that mistake because part of my issue is I trim so far in advance, it's very easy to mix up the bits. Um, and if you're cutting and pasting, cutting and gluing, you shouldn't have loose pages, pieces floating around that can get used in the wrong way. Okay, let's see how I did. Not enough. Oh, it's, I need to cut it at an angle. Okay, I got it. Okay. stuck between my chair and the desk. Someday I'll have a craft room that actually better accommodates me. I would, um, like I have carpet in this craft room, which is horrible because when I go to sit up and down or get up and down, I get stuck on the rug. Then when I come back, I can't sit down because the chair's across the room. It's, ugh, it's terrible. So someday I'd like to get that out of here and either get a low pile like Berber or um, wood or tile or something that the chair will roll on. So this is very disappointing. Kind of hurts my feelings that I made that mistake. But So there's a couple things that we still have yet to cover, and that's why I'm saying I'm really worried that I'm going to run out of paper. I haven't done this on a project in years, but I've also 
was very aggressive on having lots of flaps and pockets. We need to cover the back side of this extension, and then of course we have a pocket to fill. So between those two, um, let's see, between those two, what is that, 10 inches? Nine inches, I need at least nine, eight by nine inches of paper. And I'm, I probably will have the paper, but it may or may not coordinate. We'll see. Um, I'm going to call this done for now because I've got to focus on getting some other pages done to see what paper is left over in the end. So I'll show everything to you, less those two small pieces. side by side. So there's page four and page five, and I'm actually gonna do it top to bottom so that I can open them all the way. This opens that way, this opens this way. Both have inserts. This opens to the left, this goes to the right. And then this opens one more time. That's the insert that you see. And this opens one more time and the insert is missing from this one. I have it. I just moved it. I don't know where I put it. I think this might be it. Yep, this is it. It was just set aside um, while I was doing the other stuff. So these two inserts and the back of each of these need to be covered. So we made a lot of progress, but it's not quite there yet. Okay. That's it for four and five. Um, the last, the next time we come together, um, I'll cover those last two bits and let you know what I had decided. Thanks, everybody. I'll be back soon. Okay, everyone. I went through all my scraps and I found the pieces that we're going to use to finish off page four and five. And just clean, doing a little housekeeping. Let me show, show you what I did. So this is page five. And so we were focused on... Um, completing the back side of this flap and this insert. And so you can see I kind of made a mirror image of this, so it almost looks like it's an extension. Um, they're the same height, right? So that's the flow for the inside. So this is the actual base of the pocket page itself. Everything else is built on these flaps. So now we're gonna do that on the inside of page four. So there's my insert. So I found a scrap and it wasn't quite four inches. So each one of these strips is just slightly under an inch wide. Um, if I had uh, additional paper, I would have made them an inch wide, but I had um, had to get a little bit choosy um, when it came to this size. At first I tried a half inch and I didn't like the, the look. It was too, too narrow, especially since I was doing these uh, decorative corners. So I'm just going to line everything up, and I told you I like to line these up and try to mimic the cut I already have. It seems to go back together a little bit nicer. Because it doesn't nest exactly right. Okay, so I'll ink it and lay it down. It's not going to take very long to finish this last little bit. The hard part was finding the paper. <laughs> I, I thought I might have to do more color blocking, but we did it. Oh, look at that. That's way heavy. Oh, I don't like that. But let's see. Do I have another choice? This is really too narrow, so no, I don't think I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, so we're going to put this down. Got a little heavy on the ink there. And this is absolutely all of this green paper. I have other green, but not the um, checkered. Uh, I think I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Uh -oh. This panel, I'm just going to take a sliver off the edge. It's 
easier to cut the black than the um, the designer paper because I have so little of it left. There we go. Minor alteration, and that means I need to cut the side too. Okay. Let's see, it's eight inches, eight and a half. I'll cut it this way. See how we did. Yeah, looks good. So I just need to ink it, miter my corners. Not miter, but chunk. Place this goes into this pocket like so. Okay, and this is the last piece to cover. This strip is wider than this one, just ever so slightly. It's funny, I can see it, but there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna hold this to chop my corners. I don't wanna see it, so it goes this way. Too hard to do it while it's attached to the page. I'm going to draw it because it's not as wide as the slot here, so it's it's too easy to mess it up. So I'm going to do a little pencil mark, and I'll use that as my guide. right side up. We are all getting close guys.
Okay, I need to trim out a cream piece. And this is all that I had left of, of this tea. At least the 12 by 12. Uh, this is patterned salt, so it's all I have left. It's not quite thin enough. I missed it. Ah. Shoot, I have to let my glue dry. Otherwise it'll get st stuck in my trimmer, but that's what we're doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that offline so you guys don't have to wait for my glue to dry. And that is, well, that's not quite it. We still have, can't let that close. We still need to finish these two inserts, actually four inserts. So I'm gonna see if I can't come up with enough paper to cover those four inserts. When I come back, this will be glued down and we'll be working on the inserts. Okay, everyone, I've lined up the papers to finish out our inserts. So I'm going to use the orange solid here and the green solid over here. Um, and I've this is uh, all of them for page four and five. So I'm gonna get them all done together. And yeah, wow. I used a lot of paper on this, <laughs> these two pages. Oh, ah, yeah, I was gonna cut the corners, but I'll just leave them as is. They look fine. Actually, I kind of like it. Well, I say that and it looks like I've got one of them done. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this and, and cut the corners this way. I think I'd done some and some I hadn't. So I'll be consistent. I almost used the wrong side. A little bit of ink on the very edge. Okay. These will be a little easy. This one will be easier because it wasn't cut. I think two were and two weren't. I need to move my hand back. I'm in my own way.
I should be able to fix this one now. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these inside the pages. Just want to make sure I've got the right page. Page four, page five. So it's going to be two and two. Let's go <laughs> two and two and then this look this this pocket oh no this pocket <laughs> it's hard to see there it is <laughs> so let's see I need to get to there it is okay So this is the pocket. It's hard to see. Once you have the inserts in, it's a little easier to see. I'm not going to um, do the corners. I'm going to leave it square. They don't show, so I don't think it's necessary. There's a lot going on with this. these two pages. I hope you guys enjoy. I'd love to hear some feedback. Too much, not enough, love it more, a little less side. There we go. Because these little tabs are sticking out on the top, I think it helps you uh, recognize that there's something going on here where otherwise it looks just kind of like color blocking. Okay, that's page four is all done. I mean, done, done. <laughs> there's nothing else to cover and there's not enough paper to cover the back side of the inserts. Um, you definitely have to use, uh, buy some additional cardstock. Gosh darn it. I hate it when that happens. That's fatigue. Um, which I honestly am thinking about doing. But we'll see as I get closer to the end of the book um, how much paper I have left. Because there's so much going on and um, there's so many pockets and inserts already, I'm not going to do the large side pocket. I'm going to go ahead and glue the pocket page closed because um, there's plenty of stash spots in this album. You don't really need that additional space. And I think um, because the pages are relatively complicated, they're heavy. So I don't want to add additional weight. So both that, both things. Every once in a while it gets hung up on the bottom of the pocket. There it goes, and I need to tack my pocket back down because it broke free. I don't want it to squish out too much, so I'm just going to hold it gently. Okay. 
page four, page five. I think I got that in the right order. Nope. Page five, page four. <laughs> I need to write page three on the back of this so I don't mess it up. So you can see I'm doing this out of order. Three. Okay, and that makes this page six. Okay, that's it. Yay, we're finally done. The never-ending page. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be back soon with the rest of the album.